This lesson is about writing formulas for ionic compounds. So by the end of this lesson, you will be able to successfully write formulas for any ionic compound. So we're going to jump right into some examples. Uh, the first one we're going to do is write the formula for the compound that forms between sodium and chlorine. So the first thing we need to do is identify that this really is an ionic compound. If you find sodium and chlorine on the periodic table, you'll see that sodium is way over here in group one, and chlorine is way on the other side in the nonmetals in group 17. Because we have a metal from the left and a nonmetal from the right, this is indeed an ionic compound. So the first thing we're going to do is write the ion that is formed by each of these elements. So we saw that sodium was in group 1, so it's going to make a plus 1 ion. And we saw that chlorine was in group 17, so it's going to make a minus 1 ion. The next step is to cross the charges. So this plus 1 goes down here, and this minus 1 goes down here. But since we don't write the pluses or the minuses in a formula, and we don't write one in a formula. One is just invisible. If there's no number, we just assume that there's one of them. The formula is just NaCl. So let's try another one, magnesium and chlorine. And again, we'll check. Magnesium is all the way over here on the left. So we know that it is a metal, and you know that chlorine is all the way over on the right. It's a nonmetal, so this is ionic. So we'll start by writing the ion formed by each of these compounds. Magnesium is in group 2, so it's Mg2+, and we know that chloride is Cl- because it's in group 17. This 2, without the charge, is going to travel down there, and this invisible 1 will travel invisibly over there. So we end up with MgCl2. And you know from the last lesson that this means for every one magnesium, it will bond with two chlorines. Let's try one more and then you'll try some of these on your own. So calcium is in group two, so it has a charge of two plus when it forms an ion. Oxygen is in group 16. It forms a charge of two minus when it is an ion. This two ends up down here, and this two ends up down here. So you have Ca2O2. But here's the thing, for ionic compounds, you really just want the ratio of one atom to the other. So the twos cancel out. This only happens for ionic compounds. So you end up with just CaO. So for every one atom of calcium, you have one atom of oxygen. Here's some for you to try on your own. Hit pause. When you're done, hit play, and we'll go over the answers. All right, so for potassium, you should have found on your periodic table that it's K plus, and you know by now that chlorine is minus one. Cross the charges, and since um, these are just invisible ones, you end up with KCl. Magnesium, you know, is Mg2 plus. Oxygen is O2 minus. This is looking very familiar. I'm going to cross the twos, and I know that I have Mg2O2, but here's the thing. The twos cancel out, and you just end up with MgO. Aluminum is a little tricky. Let's look back at the periodic table. Here it is, way over on the right-hand side, or on the right half of the periodic table anyway, in group 13. Even though it's on the right-hand side, it's still a metal, and because it's in group 13, it has a charge of positive 3. So we'll write down the 3 plus. Bromine, just like chlorine, is in group 17, so it gets a minus sign. We'll cross the charges, and we end up with AlBr3. So this does get a little bit more complicated. There are some metals on the left-hand side, sort of towards the middle of the periodic table, that don't just have the same charge all the time. You can see that iron is smack dab in the middle of the periodic table right here. Now, we haven't talked about a trend for how many valence electrons ion, iron has or what ion it forms. So there are, there's another way that scientists communicate what ion has been formed by things like 
iron and chromium and cobalt and lead and tin. So we'll look at some others in just a minute. So iron can form the plus two or the plus three ion. And the way that we show this is by using a Roman numeral, and this is called the stock system. So if we have iron with a charge of two plus, we write it as iron Roman numeral two. And iron with a charge of three plus, we write it as iron Roman numeral three. And you can do this for any of the metals in the middle of the periodic table to show what ion they're going to make. So let's see what this means for writing formulas. So we have iron two, and we just learned that that means iron two plus, and we have chlorine, and you know by now that chlorine is Cl minus. This two goes down here, this invisible one goes down here invisibly. This is the same process we used before, and you end up with FeCl2. Here's another example. Copper is another one of these transition metals that can have different charge ions. So copper is Cu, and this one is just Roman numeral one, so that means plus one. Notice these guys are always positive. And oxygen in group 16 is O2 minus. We're gonna move this two down here, move the invisible one down here, and you end up with Cu2O. One more example, this one's a little trickier. Tin is Sn, now tin can be tin two plus or tin four plus, IV is four plus. And sulfur is in group 16, just like oxygen. So that's S2 minus. We're going to cross the charges. So this 4 goes down here. Notice I'm not writing the charges. The 2 goes down here. So we get Sn2, S4. Now remember I told you that you have to put it into the smallest possible ratio. So each of these numbers, 2 and 4, can be divided by 2. So that makes us end up with Sn invisible 1, S, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So you get Sn S2 is the final formula for tin 4 sulfide. Try some of these on your own, hit pause, and come back when you're done. All right, let's go through some of these answers together. So this is iron 3 this time, which is Fe 3 plus and chlorine makes the Cl minus ion. We're going to cross the charges and we get FeCl3. Lead 2, lead is Pb. I hope you checked your periodic table for the right formula for that. And oxygen is O2 minus. Cross the charges and you get Pb2 O2, but you know by now that the twos cancel each other out. So you get PbO. And finally, copper 1 is Cu plus, and bromine is Br minus. Ah, oh, super easy one. Cu, Br. So there's one more type of ionic compound that we need to talk about, and that's ionic compounds that include polyatomic ions. So far, we've just been talking about ions that are formed from one single atom. However, that's not always the case. Groups of bonded atoms can have a charge, and these are called polyatomic or many atom ions. Here's a list of the very common ones that you should memorize, and we're going to use these in the following examples, so feel free to come back to this list. So let's do a couple examples. Uh, most of the polyatomic ions are anions, they're negative, so we'll see them at the end of these compounds. So potassium is in group one, you know it's K plus. Nitrate, if you remember from the list we just looked at, is NO3 minus. So this works the same way. This one goes down here, this one goes down here, and you end up with KNO3. So that was pretty simple. We're going to look at a slightly more complicated one now. Magnesium is Mg2+, plus. phosphate is a polyatomic ion with formula PO4, 3 minus. So we have some big charges we're working with here. This 2 comes down here on the outside of the 4. Notice I'm not messing around with the subscripts, with the little numbers that go with the polyatomic ions. This 3 comes down here, so you have Mg, 
3. And then we have this weird PO42. We don't want to confuse the 4 that goes with the polyatomic ion with the 2 that tells us how many of that polyatomic ion there is. So we're going to use some parentheses. We're going to put the polyatomic ion, PO4, in the parentheses, and then put the 2 on the outside. So our formula is Mg3PO42. The parentheses are really important because they tell us for every three magnesium atoms, we need two PO4, or phosphate, polyatomic ions. One more example, aluminum, which is Al3+. Sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. We're going to cross these charges. And same thing, we're going to use some parentheses. So Al2, SO4, the polyatomic ion, goes in the parentheses. And then that 3 goes on the outside. Al2, SO4, 3. Try this on your own. Hit pause and come back when you're done. All right, here we go. Sodium, really easy, is Na+. Nitrate is NO3 minus. When you cross the charges, it's just one and one, so they go away. NaNO3. Magnesium is Mg2 plus. Hydroxide is OH minus. This two is gonna come down here, invisible one over here. Here's the tricky thing. We have magnesium, but we wanna show that we need two hydroxide ions, not just two hydrogens. So I'm gonna put the hydroxide in parentheses to show that for every one magnesium atom, we need two hydroxides. Last one, calcium two plus, phosphate is PO4 three minus. We're gonna cross the charges, the two goes on the outside of the four, the three comes down here, and we're gonna need some parentheses. We've got Ca3, PO4, two. And if you're getting that one right, you're doing pretty good. So here's some mixed practice. Some of these have polyatomic ions. Some of them have transition metals that need uh, a Roman numeral. Some of them are just very simple uh, ionic compounds with two ions. So try all four of these and come back and check your answers. All right, here we go. So we have iron 2, which is iron 2 plus. Nitrate, which is NO3 minus. This 2 is going to come down here. The invisible 1 goes down here. And you end up with Fe, invisible 1, NO3, 2. So iron nitrate. Calcium and sulfur. This is a simple one. Calcium is Ca2 plus. Sulfur is S2 minus. We're gonna cross the charges. We would have Ca2S2, but the twos cancel out. So you just end up with CAS. Letter C. Aluminum is Al3 plus. Carbonate is CO3 two minus. You may have had to go back and look that one up. We're gonna cross the charges. Three goes on the outside of carbonates three. The two ends up down here, and you end up with Al2CO3, 3. And finally, lead for sulfate. This has uh, a polyatomic ion and uses the stock system. So here we go. Lead is Pb, IV is 4 plus, sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. We're going to cross the charges. And we end up with Pb2, SO4 in parentheses, 4. Now this isn't quite the correct answer yet. You notice that you can divide the subscript for lead um, and the subscript for sulfate by the same number. Do not touch the 4 that goes with sulfate. That is part of what makes this sulfate. The only two things we can divide are the numbers that we wrote down, and we can divide both of them by two. So you end up with Pb, SO4, two as your final answer. So at this point, you can write formulas for any type of ionic compound.